Father, I want to thank you, worship you, and praise you, acknowledge you, and be mindful of you, and to ask for your help always. Every day of my life, as I teach this evening, speak, I ask for your presence and guidance, direction, wisdom, knowledge, and your grace. I thank you, I love you, and need you. I pray and thank you for each one that is here. I pray that they will enjoy themselves. I pray that we will learn and grow and mature and develop together as Christians and as a church. I pray for all these spoken requests this evening, Father, that were spoken. I pray. I know you know. And you ask us to let our requests be made known unto God. And you teach us to pray. And it's a wonderful reality and a blessing to be able to talk to you and know that you hear and care and love and can do anything that we ask or think and beyond our imagination. I thank you and love you. Bless each one. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. And amen. We have been talking about holiness. So, and I ask you, this makes what, the third week or something like that, the third time, or the, yes. maybe it's the third time? Okay. Um, Katrina got me a board, because I like doing things different. So she got me a board. So I'm going to start again with the questions I've already asked. What is holiness? What holiness is not? Okay? And there again, holiness is just simply defined by one word, obedience. Okay? Now I'm just going to go to the book of Luke, chapter 6 and verse 46, where Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? So therefore, he's asking us and telling us to obey him. Okay? Now, I'd like to ask you a personal question. Is there times in your life that you disobey? Absolutely. I would say every day. <laughs> and I'm not saying that light heartedly. Don't misinterpret me. But you and I are human. And don't misinterpret that how I say that. You and I are human. And we fail and we falter and we, even, we sin. So, I would say from day to day we do rebel or revoke or disobey. Mm -hmm. I, we do. Remember John, I said the last time I think it was, I was teaching this, John in his first letter, the letters that he wrote to the church, not the gospel, he says, if any man says he does not sin, he's a liar. Mm -hmm. And the truth's not any. And there's lots of times people say, well, I failed or I made a mistake. No, why don't you just say what it is? You sinned. Okay? We try to make it look pretty or we try to make excuses for it. Why don't we just say, I sinned? Okay? Now, last week, no, it wasn't last week, two weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks ago, I wrote some stuff on the board. And as I said, Katrina, thank you, honey. God bless you. Thank you. I wrote some stuff on this board and I'll ask the questions tonight. Is God God? Yes. Yes. Are there absolutes? Yes. Is there a right and wrong? Yes. Can a Christian sin against God and not face the consequences? That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Number four. Can a Christian sin against God and not face the consequences? Okay. Open your Bibles if you don't care. Because that's just what we're going to look at tonight. We're going to look at that question. And then we will, the next time we're up here, good Lord willing, we will continue with another part. 
into the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15. And as I said, I like using my Bible. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Verse 22 and verse 23. And this is the prophet Samuel. And Samuel said, he's talking to King Saul, who was the first king of Israel. And Samuel said, you see, God sent him on a mission to kill King Agag, kill everybody, kill the animals, kill the livestock, kill, kill the people. Uh, did he do it? No, he didn't. That's rebellion. Okay? And Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in what? As in obeying the voice of the Lord. Now I want you to pay attention to that and underline that word, obey. Remember the song? Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. I learned that song from that Bible school teacher I was telling you about. <laughs> Honey, I can't sing a lick. <laughs> Believe me, you don't want me in that choir. <laughs> and Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? You see, instead of killing them, he, he offered sacrifices of what God told him to kill. As in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey, there again we have that word obey. Mm -hmm. To obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken or to listen to me, I added that, but that's who he's referring to himself, than the fat of rams. Mm -hmm. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because, now pay attention, here is the consequence. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen right then, but it's going to happen. Here's the consequence for his sin. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also hath rejected thee from being king. Wow. Now I ask you, are there consequences for your sin? Yeah. But you got to realize, if you read back here and go back a little farther, do you realize that when Samuel approached him with this, there's one thing that Saul did not do. He did not repent. Confronted with it, he was guilty of sin, so to speak. But he would not admit it. That's where you get in trouble. It's when you openly rebel against God and you know you've done it. And you refuse to confess it or to repent of it. Does anybody know what really what repent means? It means that you agree with God that He's right and you're wrong. God ain't never wrong. <laughs> God's never wrong, but you are. That's why as I go back to 1 John, reading 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 10, he said, if we confess our sins, there it is. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, we're not going to get into that yet right at this moment, but still yet this portion came to me. We're going to talk about that later. As we get into the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, the Hebrew writer said, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is forever set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We need to lay aside that sin that is so easily entangles us, don't we? Saul, you see, he would not. He would not admit it. He would not confess it. He went right on. And brother, he's going to pay. And I've already shared with you guys, I don't know if we'll get that far tonight or not, but I've already shared with you that God will kill you if you persist in your sin. Amen. I can prove that biblically. Yeah. Brother, sin has consequences. I'm going to say something here there again. I hope it don't come across wrong, but yet I wanted to get the point across. Everybody talks about how wonderful the love of God is, and that's true. I cannot argue that one point. He's merciful. He's compassionate. But brother, you ain't going to spit in God's face and get away with it. You ain't going to do it. It'll catch you out. This may be 2022, I think it is, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> this may be 2022 and we may be living in, well, we got to be politically correct. Well, I think that's hogwash. Amen. And I don't see that to be critical of anybody, but yet God is God and the Bible says it and I believe it. Amen. And we can't change God because he says, I don't change. That's right. That's right. What he said, whenever eternity was, whenever it started, I don't have a clue because he's eternal. He don't have no beginning or end. But God says, I don't change. He don't have to. He's perfect. And he hates sin. And when God saves us, he calls us to holiness. Does he not? Amen. <laughs> All right, if you don't care, follow with me. <laughs> Joe, I like to laugh and have fun. <laughs> Turn to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 31. Now, I want you to pay attention here. Now, does anybody have an idea how long Saul was king? Forty years. Now, he was... King, remember we studied about this last week. Saul was in our Sunday school lesson in chapter 9, chapter 8, chapter 9 when they wanted a king. So we come down to chapter 10. So from 10 to 31, we cover about 40 years. So how long from twin here to this time, it, it had to be in the 30s or it could have been close to 40 years. But yet, brother, he's going to get found out. You don't escape God. Okay? Where are we, Roger, in the Bible? First Samuel 31, verse 1. Thank you. Sometimes my ears don't work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. First Samuel chapter 31. I'm going to read the first three verses, and then I'm going to read verse 6. And I want you, there's again. Now remember what God said, because you rejected me, I've rejected you from being king. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, look here. 1 Samuel 31. Verse 1, 2, and 3. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. And the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Goboa. Now say this. But stop and think about it. And you touched on it with the judges, with Gideon. If Israel had a, go to go to book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, there's 68 verses of scripture there. The first 15 verses deal with the blessings. The last, brother, stop and think about it. They're all curses. Mm -hmm. So here, they're running from their enemies. If they had been in the will of God doing what they were supposed to do, they wouldn't have had to have run. That's right. You see, children, sin has consequences.
Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard upon who? Saul. Saul. And upon his who? Saul. Sons. And the Philistines slew or killed Jonathan, Abinadab, Malchashua, Saul's sons. And the battle went sore against who? Saul. And the archers hit him, and he was sore wounded from the archers. He's going to die. Mm -hmm. Now look in verse 6. So Saul, what? Died. Now the thing of it is, there again I say this, and I don't say it to be, you know, but yet I want to be truthful. This man died in disgrace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Saul died, and his three sons, and his armor bearer, and all his men. That same day together. You can't run from God. You can't hide. Your sin will find you out. Now, very familiar passage of Scripture. Turn to the book of Deuteronomy, Numbers, chapter 32. I like this passage of Scripture. I really do. Numbers, chapter 32. And verse 23. Numbers 32, 23. This is Moses now. Speaking to the, he's speaking here to two and a half tribes. The tribe of Reuben, the tribe of Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh. This is who he's referring to here and talking about. If you, if you read all this or go back before it. But if, you, you, you see that word he's contrasting. But if you will not do so. In other words, if you aren't going to do what I say. Because this is what God said. Behold, there's again is that word. You have sinned against the Lord. And be sure. Your sin will find you out. So I ask now again, does sin have consequences? Yes, it does. Children, you can't hide. I can't. You can't. Nobody can. You can't hide from God. He knows. It's foolish to try to even do it. There again, I'm going to share something with you tonight. There's times that when I pray, I'll say this, and I mean, and I hope it. I'll say, God, I'm glad that you know that I can't hide anything from you. I mean, I say that. Because I want Roger to know, and don't be stupid, Roger. God knows. So don't try to hide it and cover it up and make it look pretty. Put jelly on it. Sin is sin. And it has consequences. You can't get away with it. You might for a while, but God will get you. Go back, for example, when I said that, there's a thought come to me in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 17, all the way through 2 Kings, chapter 9. You remember when Elijah the prophet and Naboth's vineyard and uh, King Ahab wanted his vineyard, and he, so his wife Jezebel said, leave it to me, I'll get it for you. Uh -huh. So she devised people to lie against him, and they had a feast, and they said, Naboth, set him up on high. He blasphemed God, they took him out, and they stoned him to death. God 
called Elijah and said, go down to Nabal's vineyard. I got a message. I want you to give Ahab. So he goes down. He tells Ahab. He said, who do you think you are? You did this in secret. But I'm going to do it openly. Now it took 15 years, if you'll find out from the time right here till you get over into 2 Kings chapter 9, 15 years has transpired when Jezebel, remember, Jezebel looked out the window, she painted her face and put on her pretty clothes. Jehu come riding through the chariot, she trying to try to be attractive to him. Oh man, I love the Old Testament, it's beautiful. <laughs> Jehu, Jehu, Jezebel looked out the window. Jehu rode by on his chariot. He stopped. He looked up at her. He said, throw her out the window. <laughs> and as she went tumbling out the window down over that rock wall, the dogs came and licked her blood up right in the same place where she had Nabal killed. <laughs> you don't escape God. And I have to say every day, and I, to be perfectly honest with you, there's times in my life that I personally, I'm talking about me, I am ashamed of myself. There's so many people today, they want to talk about homosexuality, they want to talk about gay and they want to talk about and yet they'll shoot their mouth off at 99.9 .9 miles an hour and talk about everybody in the community but yet they're so good and so righteous and this person here is going to die and go to hell well, I got news for you the Bible says you keep the whole law and offend in one point you're guilty of it all so what you ought to do is keep your mouth shut and live your life by the grace of God and quit worrying about everybody else. Because I got news for you. It's all I can do to take care of me. Exactly. And we all have sin. We all have sin. And Brother Darrell, yes, by the grace of God. I am a Christian, and I'm saved, and I know I'm going to heaven. I know I am, as I've shared with you. But still yet, every day of my life, Brother Darrell, I fail, mm -hmm. and I falter, mm -hmm. and I sin. Yeah. And I, it, it makes me look at myself in a mirror, and I don't like what I see. I'll never forget. Don't know if I shared it with you or not, but the first time I ever heard L.M. Barnett preach, maybe I shared it, I don't know, sometimes I forget. He got in that pulpit and he preached, I'll never forget it, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, and he made a remark that Sunday morning along that message, I'll just share this with you. He said, there's times that I go to the mirror and I look at myself and I don't like what I see. I never forgot that. And her, Katrina, honey, me, there's times I, I look at myself and I don't like what I see. Now, do you? I think all of us have room for improvement. And Brother Darrell, that's why I need you, and I hope you need me. Because we need to keep each other in line. Don't we? Yeah. We need encouragement. We need love. We need help. We need prayer. Amen. Amen. And preach the truth. But preach it in love. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Because I got news for you. There again, I, I say that a lot. I don't need you to tell me my faults. I know them. <laughs> exactly. If I'm honest, I'll, I know it. I won't get mad at you, but 
but don't try to be pointing the finger and, 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 and make you hold her. I, I'll probably tell you to shut your mouth. <laughs> but yet, in love, let me know and challenge me and encourage me to be better and do better. Don't beat me over the head with a club. I don't need that. I've, got, I've had enough of that over the years. <laughs> Do it with love. And I hope and pray that when I raise my voice from time to time, I get a little, I just get excited. I hope you all don't take it as being mean and rude because I, I, I don't mean it like that. But I want to get the message across and challenge you by the grace of God to bring him glory and honor and live a life that pleases God. Amen. Amen. And I look at all these people in the Bible that sometimes says, well, I ain't Moses and I ain't Abraham. Well, I'm glad I ain't. <laughs> Amen. Because I got news for you, brother. They failed too, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> 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 I mean, Abraham lied twice. I know that right off. <laughs> Moses, now he wrote in the book of Numbers. I, I like this kind of comical, I think. But yet Moses wrote in the book of Numbers, chapter 12, that Moses was the meekest man in all the world, but yet he had a temper and he wanted to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> so I say, <laughs> that's why we don't measure ourselves with people, do we? No, <laughs> no we don't. We sure don't measure ourselves with people. Well, brother, we all fall short, don't we? Yeah. That's why he said, remember what I said earlier? He said, looking unto who? Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. Somebody's about to tell me what time it is because that thing there tells me it's 20 to 11. <laughs> what time is it, honey? It's only 7 Okay. <laughs> now, turn to the book of Numbers, chapter 20, if you don't care. Now, I'm going to read this to you, uh, and I want you to, the first time I think we touched a lot on what, but yet I want, I want to go back because I think it's really needful and very interesting. But look in the book of Numbers, chapter 20, and I'm going to start in verse 2, okay? And I'm going to stop from time to time, and I'm going to say, did you get that? <laughs> And there was no water for the congregation. <laughs> now I want you all to realize here that accordingly, nobody knows exactly how many, but do you realize that there was somewhere between two to three million people that was in this wilderness? <laughs> and poor old Moses, poor one man. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine? I, I can see why he got angry. I can even see why he wanted to kill a few people. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> and there was no water for the congregation. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. Because they're the leaders. Right. Aaron is the high priest, and Moses is, well, he's the hand of God, so to speak. Right. And the people chode or contended with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord? Boy, they forgot about the miracles, ain't they? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. And why have you brought us up this congregation of the Lord into the wilderness that we and our cattle should die there? 
And why have you made us to come up out of Egypt? See, it's kind of just one negative thing after another, ain't it? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us into this evil place? It is no place of seed or figs or vines, pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Now I want you to pay attention here, because I'm going I'm to say, Did you get that? Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, you and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. Now pay attention to that. And it shall give forth, what's that next word? His. His. That's a person. You remember going back to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10? And the rock that followed them was who? Christ. His is a person. Who is this person? It's Jesus. Now pay attention. Did you get that? And speak into the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. Now, Brother Roy in the book of John, chapter 4, but in John chapter 7 also, who is the water of life? Jesus. Yes. He is. He is the Children, I got news for you. You may not even think about this or be aware of this, but Jesus was with God whenever eternity started. Uh -huh. He just didn't come as a babe in a manger. He was eternal also. Yes. So anytime you study about the angel of the Lord, it's referring to Christ. Here is referring to Jesus. Ain't you glad? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. Now children, how much water do you think three million people can drink? You, you stop and think about, speak to the rock. It, his, shall give forth water for the people. Abundantly. <laughs> Abundantly. Did you? I mean, gosh, you stop and think about that. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their what? How many animals do you think they had? Way more than How many animals? Cattle, goats, sheep. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord. As he commanded him, and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Pay attention. Here are his frustrations coming out. Eh? Hear now what? You rebels. Must who? We. Now who just told him? Exactly. And he, who's taking credit for it here? We. Must we. Who's he referring to? Moses and Aaron. Here now, you rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod he smoke the rock twice. God never said hit it. He said speak to it. Amen. Now, I brought this out the first time, but yet I want you to stop and think. When Moses smote the rock, who did he hit? Christ. He smoked Jesus. 
You ever stop and think about that? He smote Jesus. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beast also. Aren't you glad that God's merciful? Mm -hmm. Well, if you wanted to, brother, he could have struck him dead instantly, couldn't he? Oh, yeah, absolutely. What time is it? <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron because you what believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel therefore you shall not bring this congregation to the land which I have given them are there consequences for sin I'll stop right there again and ask is there are there consequences for sin yes this is the water of Meribah because the children of Israel strove with the Lord and he was sanctified with them. Now, jump down to, to verse 22, okay? And the children of Israel even the whole congregation journeyed from Kadesh and came unto Mount Hor. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in Mount Hor by the coast of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered unto his people. In other words, he's going to die. For he shall not, what, enter the land which I have given unto the children of Israel, because you rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. And there again, I'll stop and ask the question again. Are there consequences for sin? Yes. Take Aaron and Eleazar, his son. The reason he's taking Eleazar, he's the firstborn. The priest is going to pass to him. And bring them up into Mount Hor and strip Aaron of his garments and put them upon Eleazar, his son. And Aaron shall be given to his people and shall die there. I don't know if you're aware of this or not. You go back and read the first part of Numbers chapter 20, and then you read this, and then Moses dies. How, you, know, you know, Miriam died, Aaron died, and Moses died within three months of each other. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. But they did. Okay? Now, I want to show you this. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Yeah, Deuteronomy, yeah, Deuteronomy 32. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. I don't know if you ever thought about it or not. I'm going to read verse 48 through 52. Now look at here. Deuteronomy 32, 48 through 52. And the Lord spake unto Moses that same day, saying... Get thee up unto this mountain of Baram, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho. And behold, the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession. Now this goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 15, don't it? And die in the mount where you go up, and be gathered unto thy people. As Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people. What's the next word? Because. because. Because you trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah, Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin, because you sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel, yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go there into the land which I gave unto the children of Israel. I'm going to let you see it, Moses, but you ain't going to enter it. Now, here's what I want you to see. Turn to chapter 3, Deuteronomy, please.
I'm going to I'm going to read verse 20. I'm going to read 21 through 28. And I commanded Joshua at that time saying thine eyes have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto thee these two kings Sihon and Og. So shall the Lord do unto all the kingdoms which thou possess passes. You shall not fear them for the Lord your God shall fight for you. And I besought the Lord at that time to say Now pay attention. O Lord God Thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy mind. I pray thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, that goodly mountain in Lebanon. Now, let's read the best of it. But the Lord was what? Does God get angry? <laughs> yes, He does. Yes, He does. You ever read so many times, if you ever take your pen and underline, especially in the Old Testament, not so much in the, well, I don't think it's in the New Testament, but if you ever, if you ever study, if you ever just want to look it up, maybe in a commentary or whatever, and underline the words, because you provoked me to anger. Underline it and write down how many times that's in the Bible. Because you provoked me to anger. That's what Moses did. All right, now, now, let's read the rest of it because I want you to see this. But the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes and would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, Let it suffice thee. Now, pay attention to this. Speak no more unto me of this matter. He's done. He was angry. Get thee up into the top of his gall, and lift up thine eyes westward, eastward, northward, southward, and behold it with thine eyes, for thou shalt not go over this Jordan. <laughs> Does sin have consequences? Now, children, I want to show you something. And then I'll close right here. I'm going to read 10 verses, all right? Chapter 38, the book of Genesis. Now I want you to underline this here. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to see if you've ever thought about this or read this. Or I'm sure you've read it, but maybe if you ever think about it. And it came to pass at that time that Judah, which was the fourth son of Jacob, where Christ child came went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adolamite whose name was Hira and Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua and he took her and went in unto her and she conceived and bore a son and called his name Ur she conceived again and bore a son and called his name Onan and she yet conceived again and bare a son and called his name Shelah. Now, when I get into verse 6, 7, 8, pay attention. And he was at Kizah when she bare him. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose son was, whose name was Tamar. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord. Now, what does the last part of that say? The Lord killed him. And the Lord killed him. Hmm. And Judah said unto Onan, Go into thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass that he went into his brother's wife, that he spilled his semen on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displease the Lord, what does the last part say? He killed him also. <laughs> She's laughing. You already know this. You know. So I just, I'm going to stop right here with this, and we'll get into another part in a couple of weeks. 
still dealing with holiness. But the thing I wanted to get across tonight is, and ask that question, and I want to get it across to you, does sin have consequences? Mm -hmm. And God will take you out. Yes, it does. Miss Katrina, honey, what time is it now? It is 7.48. Okay. Okay. Is there any question? Any comment? I can't believe we've been studying this. <laughs> Amen. Children, I have often said, and I still believe that with all my heart, so help me. The Bible is the greatest book that's ever been written. Yes, it is. It is. It's the only book that is alive. <laughs> and it is, it's alive. The greatest book that's ever been written. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's not a time yet I can honestly say that I don't pick it up. It doesn't matter if I've read something a hundred times. I read it and I learn something else. Because God is in it. Amen. Amen. It's wonderful. Some people say, well, there's no pictures in the Bible. <laughs> there's lots of you just have to have your imagination. You just don't have it looked. <laughs> Because from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, there's a portrait of Christ on every page. Yes. And it's so descriptive. Don't ever forget it. Okay? Let's bow our heads. Miss Katrina, honey, would you dismiss us? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything, dear Lord. We thank you that, that you loved us enough to give us your words, dear Lord so that we can know your heart and, and know what you want from us, dear Lord, that we have a map to follow. We thank you, dear Lord, that you are so alive to us. You're so with us in your presence, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, that you have grace and mercy and you forgive us, dear Lord. We, we fail you constantly every day and yet you love us so much that you sent your perfect son here to die for us. We thank you for that, dear Lord. We pray that you will help us every day to do your will. We pray that we will just be a testimony with what we do and what we say, dear Lord, that people will come to know you. Dear Lord, we just thank you for, for Roger. We thank you for this church. We thank you for the people here, dear Lord, who have touched us in so many ways. And we pray, dear Lord, that you will just continue to work in and through this church for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, if you tell me where this goes, I'll put it up.